Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, in the first chapter, verses 1 to 14, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. And God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Amen. <clears throat> I know that when I was a kid, running away from home was a thing. You would have a tiff or an argument with your parent or sibling or something went bad in the house and you could run away from home. And I never really ran away from home, but I have two recollections of places I went for about an hour. One was to the car and locked myself in the car running away from home. And the other, I remember being hidden in the front bushes for again another hour running away from home. And when my kids were little, we used to read the children's book, A Baby Sister for Francis. And maybe you remember that book as well where Frances, she packs her whole backpack filled with things that she's going to need when she runs away from home, and she only gets as far as underneath the dining room table. One of the ways that I think we can understand the mystery of Advent, Christmas, and the incarnation of Jesus, the Word becoming flesh, is the Christ leaving his home becoming a human being and making his home among us. Jesus, the Christ, existed from the beginning of all time and was always at home within the life of the Trinity. There was not a time when Jesus was not at home uh, dwelling within the Godhead. Jesus' home was and is perfect, whole, holy, and harmonious. Jesus' home was and is a beautiful picture of family where everyone always gives to one another, everyone always listens to one another, and everyone always loves one another. There's no division in the home of the Trinity. There are no arguments or disagreements, only mutual loving faithfulness to one another. Jesus' home was so good that I'm certain we can say it was perfect, complete, and flawless. And Jesus left his perfect, loving, and faithful home to make his home among us, the very home he created, this earth. Now let me ask you another question about home. Have you ever spent... Uh, significant amount of time in someone else's home, maybe a week or two or even a month, visiting with family, visiting with a friend. It's not easy to live in someone else's home. You don't know where things are in the kitchen. You're afraid that maybe you'll do something wrong or break something. 
and it is difficult to be in someone's home. Just a few months ago, we said goodbye to our two youngest sons, who are twins, to go to college. And now they are back home. And this week has been wonderful with Thanksgiving. Lots of time spent together. But I know that there is, in the next coming two months, going to be tension and difficulty and struggle about them having left home and now coming back home. And us as mom and dad trying to impose rules and regulations about what it means to be living in this home. The fact that Jesus moves from his perfect home, he comes down, humbles himself, empties himself out of love for us, ought to stun us, amaze us, befuddle us, and even overwhelm us. Out of pure, heartbreaking, parental, and familial love, Jesus came into our home where there is risk, vulnerability, violence, disappointment, Betrayal, pain, suffering, so that we might be welcomed into his home, the, lo- the home of the Trinitarian family, Father, Son, and Spirit, which is in fact our home away from home, the home that has always been within us and yet so far for us, from us, the home that we were created for. A 5th century monk named Mark the Ascetic puts it this way about Jesus. Keep the humility of our Lord in your hearts and never forget it. Jesus took upon himself becoming what we are so that we might become what he is. The word became human so that humans might become the word. Being rich, he became poor for our sakes, so that through his poverty we might become rich. In his great love for us, Jesus became like us, so that through every virtue we might become like him. End quote. Jesus making his home among us should not be simply understood as him coming down to be with us, descending to us, but also God lifting up our humanity and all humanity into the divine life. In God's great love for us, he became like us so that we might become like God, image bearers of God. Jesus made his home among us to exalt our humanity to its rightful place, to the way we were created to be, like God's image at home with ourselves at home in the world and at home most of all with god listen to some of these little quotes from the early church fathers about john 1 1 14 this little verse that says the word became human and made his home among us jesus was made man so that we might be made god lowercase g athanasius Jesus was made man, increasing what is ours while not diminishing what is his, Gregory the Great. Cyril of Alexandria says Jesus enriched our nature by joining himself with us. And finally, St. Augustine says, By becoming flesh, Jesus healed our flesh, which had had been blinded by sin and death, but now can see his glory. Jesus left his home to give us his very self, exalt us and lift us up and impart his divine nature unto us, restoring our birthright as humanly human divine image bearers just like him. But Jesus not only came to be among us, Jesus came to make his home in us. Jesus left his perfect and loving home in communion with the Father and the Spirit to make his home on earth and to make his home in us. As Jess just read for us in Ephesians, Paul puts it this way, We are God's house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. 
The writer of the book of Acts says it this way, The God who made the world and everything in it does not live in temples or houses built by human hands. For in God we live and move and have our very being, because we are the house in which God lives by the Spirit. As beautiful as this temple and sanctuary is, God does not solely live in temples built by human hands. God lives in movable temples, in tabernacles. We are the mobile homes of God. God, through Jesus and in the Spirit, has made His home in us. Every Advent, I love to reflect on Mary. Because we all, like Mary, every day have the Holy Spirit coming to us and inviting us to become the home of God, the womb of God, allowing God to take up residence within us and become the dwelling place of God so that we, like Mary, will become partakers in the divine nature and bear God to the world. And like Mary, in order to become the house and the dwelling place of God, we must choose to partake. God will never force his entry into our lives. We must be willing. We must, like Mary, say yes and yield to God's will and follow God's word. And this is Mary's witness to us. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, she was not sure. She was suspicious, overwhelmed, confused, and asked Gabriel, How can this be? How will this plan work? But Gabriel encourages her in the midst of her questioning, and he reminds her that she has found favor with God and that the Holy Spirit would accomplish this, and therefore nothing is impossible with God. And Mary wondered and pondered and questioned and continued to discern, but at the end of the conversation, she humbly says, Here I am. May it be unto me according to your word. Becoming the home of God, like Mary, involves honesty, humility, courage, trust, and intentionally opening ourselves to receive the divine gift of God's presence. Receiving the divinely given gift of the incarnation, God making God's home among us and within us, requires us to re be intentional. Intention, fueled then by grace, awakens in us moment by moment and day by day, year by year, an awareness that God is in fact dwelling within us and is at home within us. That our sense of homesickness and homelessness in this world and in this life has been calling to us in the depths of our being to be fulfilled in the presence of God within us. Our intention to receive and consent to the divine indwelling of the Advent and Christmas season can be enacted in simple, regular, and deliberate spiritual practices. And those practices remind us and awaken us from our sleep and attune us to the fact that God is near and God is within us. Perhaps one of the silver linings of this pandemic is that our corporate spiritual practices, like lighting the Advent candles, normally done together here in this beautiful sanctuary, have to be done and moved into our homes. We must think about what it means not just to be the church gathered here in a central location, but to be the church scattered out in Pittsburgh, being the mobile temples as Jesus was the temple, and the Spirit now makes us the temple of the Holy Spirit. So this Advent season, as Pastor Heather already mentioned in the children's message, you have the opportunity to intentionally consecrate, set aside, make holy your physical home and the home of your life, body, soul, and mind, as the dwelling place of God. 
daily awakening to receive the divinely given gift of Jesus, making his home among you and the spirit making her home within you. As Pastor Heather already said, we are making available to you Advent boxes filled with ideas on how you can make your home the sanctuary of God in this Advent season. Lighting your candle not just once a week as we do here in worship, but perhaps lighting that candle every day at the dinner table. Reading a devotional every morning, doing the spiritual practices in the book, slowing down, taking time to decorate with your family your home, reminding ourselves and remembering that while we cannot gather here together, we are still the dwelling place of God. We are still the house of God while we are scattered. So I want to invite you to consider a few questions as I close this morning. And maybe at home you want to close your eyes and consider these three questions. How do you and your household want to consecrate some intentional space within yourselves and within your physical home for God this Advent season? Secondly, what rooms of your house have maybe gone unattended for some time? Perhaps the doors have been closed for a while dusty and dirty, and in need of more hope, more peace, more joy, more love. What would it look like to grant God access to those rooms of your life? And thirdly, are there people you are being invited to make space for in yourself? or in your home this Advent season. Perhaps someone who needs your forgiveness. Perhaps those in our society who are sheltered, alone, forgotten, and neglected. Has God made, God, my, made space in God's self for you? Is there an invitation from God for you to make space in yourself for them? Friends, this Advent season, may our vision of Jesus the Christ be magnificent and glorious. And may our vision of ourselves united with Jesus the Christ be equally magnificent and glorious. Knowing that God has found favor with each of you. And God's desire and plan is for the fullness of God's presence to dwell with you, abide in you, and live in you, making you God's home. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be so.